Walter and Leonore Annenberg were both American diplomats, and they were philanthropists. And in 1963, they decided to build a marvelous mid-century home here in the desert. They paired up with A. Quincy Jones, who was a famous architect in Southern California and, and beyond that, and they designed this masterpiece. So the mid-century modern movement really occurred across the, the globe. And the way it was interpreted in Southern California takes many shapes and forms. In the Annenberg's case, they had it in their mind and they brought to the table, to the architect, that they wanted a Mayan influence, they called it. They had toured through Mexico, they had toured the pyramids, and hence they wanted a pyramidal roof on their mid-century home. When they designed this house, they were not yet diplomats. They were successful publishers. They were a very wealthy power couple. What happened was they built this home for themselves. And as the history of the home unfolded with one of their first guests being President Eisenhower, and it just snowballed from there, one dignitary came after another, and they saw the power of place here. They saw their friends coming out of Washington, D.C. and other places in the world and coming to this tranquil environment. And they saw really interesting conversations happen here. And then later it became a more conscious effort to use this property for diplomatic outreach. They were bringing people together from different worlds. For instance, on the patio, we know from the guest books, you would have Prince Charles with Bob Hope, with Frank Sinatra, and with Ronald Reagan. There were some relationships forged through this property. For instance, it was actually Mr. Annenberg who introduced Ronald Reagan to Margaret Thatcher. That became a very famous pairing and a powerful pairing through the 80s. It, it impacted policy, you know, across the pond, so to speak. What the Annenbergs uh, wished for their property after their residency was that we continue to provide what they naturally provided and make the home a place to gather people who have impact in the world for the greater good, really to bring peace to the world. That was their, their goal. And so they asked us to do the same, to bring people, important people to the property, to be in the home, to relax and have important conversations. One of our recent guests was President Obama during his term, and he brought to the property Chinese President Xi Jinping, and they had an important summit here, and a lot of good work was decided out of that meeting here. President Trump did not opt to use the property, but it certainly was available to him. As a presidential retreat, uh, President Biden is more than welcome to plan meetings here, and we would welcome him and his administration as we would any president. This was the original chapel that was, uh, that was built in 1947. In the, the 50s, in, in the, the, the United States, the American style was very different than the European style of synagogues. Everything that was almost the antithesis of the Baroque, Victorian, the very grand, thing, things were much more simplistic. So if you look at these pictures, in, in mid-century architecture with, with synagogues was very utilitarian. Was it with not much interp interpretation? It was that was the ark. It looked like a box. That was the the, the era. The idea of, of when we say, well, you know, do you get spirituality of it? That's kind of a twenty first century word. Um, the nineteen fifties. If you went to the average Jewish person and said, you know, you know, what, where do you find your spirituality? They may not know what you're talking about. As a rabbi, I'd say this, you know, you know. I find our, our much more mo modern space upstairs, for me, much more spiritual than, than, than this space. This, is, this served a purpose a long time ago. Is it relevant for the era that we li live in now? Probably not, but, it's, but it was then. When Frank Sinatra's mother died, Rabbi Hurwitz did one of the eulogies. The Sinatra fam family was so moved by, by what Rabbi Horwitz said, and uh, Frank Sinatra came up to Rabbi Hur Horwitz and said, if there's anything you ever need, you know, just call me. I'll be more than happy to help you. Well, a few years later, they wanted to expand the, the temple, but they needed like $4 million. Now, $4 million in 1982 is a lot more in today's dollars. Mr. Sinatra to come help him and do some benefits and whatnot, and they raised it. They raised all of it. It is important when you walk into a worship space 
regardless if it's Jewish or Christian or Catholic, that you're inspired when you walk in. When you come in from the back and you see this vista with these gorgeous mountains and through this window, it really gives such an impression of just majesty and the grandeur of God. The building itself, this wing, was really designed to look like Noah's Ark. And if you notice, there's a lot of use of like, these colors of a rainbow. Part of the Noah story is that after the world floods and the waters recede, and God puts a rainbow in the sky saying, I'm, I'm never going to destroy the world again. It's a sense of hope. It's a sense of a promise of continuity. We label ourselves as a contemporary progressive con congregation. So we welcome people no matter what, what their, the color of their skin are, what their, what their background is, what their sexual orientation is. With me being an openly gay president of a, of a conservative movement temple, and with Rabbi Rosenberg, we want to make sure that this is a, quote, safe space for everybody.